how to get her to make more of an effort. Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about how to get her to make more of an effort and to express her feelings. But before we get into this video, please leave a like on it and please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you would like me to discuss something in a future video or you have a topic for me, then please leave it down in the comments or if you have any tips or advice yourself. So let's get straight into it. So how to get her to make more of an effort and to express her feelings. Um, if you would like to, and if you learn in this certain way, then please use a pen and paper to take notes if you like learning in that way. Obviously you don't have to, but sometimes it's good to help you retain information if you write them down. So uh, this was a question from a viewer. So let's get into the question first. I didn't leave their username just in case they wanted anonymity. So the comment goes like this. Um, Thank you so much. English isn't my first language, but I understand all what you're saying. Your accent and the way and way of speaking is so clear and good. That's really nice of you to say. Thank you so much. Um, I want you to tell us how to get her to do more of efforts to express her feelings and how to deal with a shy girl. My society isn't the same where you are, that's why girls here have problems with expressing, expressing and involving in relationships. Hope that you get me because my English isn't that good, but thank you again. So these are the core points that I want to address in this video and your main questions. So the main, uh, like the main points that we're going to cover in this is how to get her to make more of an effort. Uh, number two is how to get her to express her feelings. And number three, how to deal with a shy girl, which is basically what this person wants to know. Um, another thing, just briefly before we get into these three points um, about women from different social kind of situations where they have different rules about relationships, the dating process, um, usually that kind of thing, no matter what culture you are from, shouldn't matter that much. Um, obviously, there are things like um, things like what the way that we've been brought up, um, but if someone's attraction for you is strong, then it shouldn't matter too much about the way that they've been brought up because the biology, the attraction should be stronger than the structures that they have. And some women um, can be really structured and some guys as well, like they have these certain rules on how dating should be. Um, like for example, someone might believe that they need to always be pursued and they don't have to make any effort. It should always be someone making all of the effort and um, they have like certain number of dates where before they can kiss someone like let's say you're having a really romantic evening with uh, someone on a first date and you can just tell that the moment is right and you two you know are getting closer and closer and you can just tell that you're going to kiss soon and you go in for the kiss and then they kind of turn their cheek and say oh no I only kiss on the third date obviously you don't want to be with someone like that because even if they're denying their emotions, then that's not gonna be a very fun experience. It's not gonna be a very fun, romantic um, experience for, 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 for the both of you. And the reason why that is, is because you know when you are with someone, you want the romance to just happen naturally. But if someone is putting roadblocks in the way and putting structure, it ruins the romance. It ruins the spontaneity and the fun and the mystery and the excitement and that's all what you know those first initial dates are about before you get into that relationship it's all about um this kind of like build up of anticipation and having these romantic moments but if someone's there like no this is ha this only happens on the fifth date you can hold my hand on the third date you know things like that it just ruins the romance so um avoid people who are like that and if it seems like a lot of women in your society or in your culture are like that then you just have to keep on going through more and more women, keep on dating more and more women until you find someone who is more open to being spontaneous. Um, because you don't want a structured person like that. It's not gonna be fun. <laughs> like, romance is supposed to be fun and enjoyable. It's not supposed to be this structured, weird, kind of scheduled thing. If the attraction is there, if the attraction is strong enough, then it shouldn't matter too much about where you're from or what your culture is. So let's get into the first point then, which is how to get her to make more of an effort. And I wrote something here, um, which I'll read out to you. Um, and that is when someone is putting in less effort, the other person must back off because if they tolerate being pushed around or allowing the other person to not make any effort, they are enabling that person's behavior. You must walk away and put in less effort, match and mirror them to communicate that their behavior 
is not acceptable. So this is especially for people who you are just dating, who you haven't got into a relationship with. So if you're in, if you're dating a girl and they are not putting in much of an effort, then what you need to be doing is you need to be matching and mirroring what they do, which is like the first point that I have here, which is match and mirror their actions and communication. So if, for example, they only send you one message a week, then you also only send them one message a week. And a good way to actually tell if perhaps you are doing too much and you're not matching and mirroring their behavior enough is to actually look at your messages that you've been, your correspondence basically, and see who is messaging more or who is making the longer messages. If you're the one that is messaging more and making the longer messages, then you are not matching and mirroring what that person is communicating to you. Especially if this is someone that you are really trying to reattract, someone who you want to make more of an effort. They have to work for you. you. They can't work for you. They can't put in more of an effort if you're the one that's always putting in the effort. So therefore, you have to back off and match and mirror what they are doing so they have to, if they like you, have to put in more effort. So first thing to do is when this kind of situation happens is to match and mirror their communication and you have to have the self-control to be able to do this because some people they don't have the self-control they can't help it they're like oh no I just, I just got a message her it's been 48 hours and I haven't spoken to her I'm gonna lose her. I need to send her a message no match and mirror what they do no matter what um, and you know distract yourself if, if you can um, if you're really if you do have trouble with the self-control to not reach out and message them um, so for example, you know, go to sleep, uh, go to work, work have good, do overtime at work, um, watch movies, you know, just distract yourself. Obviously, I'd rather you distract yourself with healthy things um, like exercise or working on a side business or reading, developing your education. Um, but if you really, really are struggling and you just can't help yourself, then distract yourself any means possible, basically. Especially if you're really serious about this girl. So the next point is only message call them when you ask them out. So basically you don't want to be um, trying to get to know them over messenger or over the telephone or over FaceTime and stuff. Um, it's best to just when you are communicating with them in these kind of um, electronic ways to just use it as a tool as a way to actually meet up with them in person and not as a kind of like um, a way to get to know them because as human beings we are seriously seriously not wired to get to know someone in this way and you may have had this experience before let's say you make a friend online and you're chatting all the time over like messenger or over like a video game or something and you feel like you really know this person yet when you meet them actually in person so let's say you meet up at like a convention or something let's say you're like really into like uh, comics or something and you met online over comics and then you go to this comic convention and then you meet this per person actually face to face with them there'll be like this weird awkwardness because you haven't this is the first time you've actually met them this is the first time you've actually been around them you know technology like this like this communication with devices has only been around for a couple of decades Whereas, you know, as human beings, we've been around, we've been evolving for, you know, probably billions of years. And the way that we've always got to know one another is in face-to-face -face interactions. So avoid messaging them too much, as much as you possibly can, and just use it as a tool to meet up with them. So that means asking them out on a date, making arrangements with them, and basically saying, great, that's, I'll see you on Saturday, you know, things like that. You don't wanna be trying to get to know them. You wanna try and cut the conversation short so if they contact you in between dates cut the conversation short only allow it to be two to three messages so in between dates there may be times when she reaches out to you and she might be like hey how are you you know and then you can say back something like oh i'm great thanks how are you and then you have like a tiny tiny little conversation and then you say something great can't wait to see you on saturday can't wait to see you on sunday or i can't wait to see you the next time i see you you know things like that or you ask them out on another date if you haven't made another plan with them yet. So when they reach out to you, you just go, oh, it's great to hear from you. I'm doing really well, thanks. When are you next available to hang out? You know, something like that. And then that is when you, you know, end, start to end the conversation once you've made those plans. So another way is to be silent on social media. Um, so no posts or stories. 
So sometimes if you're posting a lot, you know, someone can't really miss you because they're seeing, you know, your posts on social media and they can kind of, I don't know what it is, but if you remain mysterious on social media and you don't post much, if anything at all, um, then it makes you more mysterious. People want to know what you're doing. And this girl, especially if you've been posting a lot recently and then you suddenly stop, this will make them wonder what you're doing. They'll be thinking, well, I thought they were on social media quite a lot and now they're not on social media as much. They're not posting, they're not uploading stories, they're not um, writing any statuses. What are they up to? It makes them miss you if you, don't, if you only put little, little breadcrumbs, basically, on social media um, and not posting every single day or every week. You know, if you're gonna post something, maybe post something like once a month. Um, and make sure that it's not anything that's, you know, um, sad or depressing um, or directed at someone. You don't want to be doing anything like that. So just, if you can, just be completely silent on social media because that will create more of the mystery and it will allow this girl to think what's going on. I need to reach out to them. I wonder what they're up to. I wonder what they're doing. And obviously the last point is if these fail and she still isn't making an effort back off entirely because, um, there's no point you uh, wasting your time on someone who's never going to make the effort. Because sometimes when a, a girl is not making any effort, it's simply because um, she has lost a little bit of attraction for you. She's kind of getting a little bit bored. Um, but when you uh, you know start to become more mysterious and you match and mirror their communication, um, the attraction then comes back and they want to make more of an effort because they realize that they might be losing you because you've backed off so much. So that causes them to have to pursue. But if you do all these things and they still don't pursue you, then obviously this girl doesn't have much of an interest in you. So therefore, you need to back off entirely and you know not say anything to them anymore and just basically cut them out of your life. Because if they're not willing to make the effort, then you shouldn't hang about. You shouldn't stay with someone who doesn't make the effort. So let's go into the next uh, point, which is how to get her to express her feelings. So this is a quote from uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. And this basically means is that people are very <laughs> self-centered and they love talking about themselves. So if you can encourage this girl to talk about herself, um, she'll start to like you more because people are quite self-centered. We love to talk about ourselves. So the first point I want to make here is to encourage her to talk about things she likes. So don't talk about things that are upsetting or sad and things that kind of create a negative emotion inside of her. Talk to her about things that she likes. Um, and if you don't know what she likes, then just, you know, pay attention to her and see um, observe what she likes. So for example, she might have a tattoo. So obviously if she has a tattoo, then she probably likes that tattoo. So you can ask her about her tattoo or perhaps she has a, a certain kind of car and you can tell that she really takes care of that car. So you ask her about her car because obviously she takes pride in her car because you can tell that she maintains it really well. Um, it might be perhaps she has like a band t-shirt on and you can ask her about the band that she likes because obviously it's on a t-shirt and if it, if it wasn't on a t-shirt then she probably wouldn't um, have it you know you know so obviously that means something to her so even if you don't really know that much about her you can observe you know the things that she's wearing the way that she has her hair if she's got any tattoos um, her vehicles you know things like that you can ask her about those kinds of things or if this is someone you've met online, like on the dating profile, then she probably has some things there that she likes and dislikes. Like, I don't know, like let's say she had on her profile that she has a cat, right? You can ask her about her cat. Because obviously if she has a cat and she has a pet, then obviously she really loves that pet. So if you ask her questions about her pet, she'll be happy to talk to you about that kind of thing. So encourage her to talk about things that she likes. Um, the next point is really, really important, and I, I'm afraid, sorry guys, but a lot of you don't actually do this, and that is focus deeply on her responses and the things that she says. So you don't just like ask her questions and let her talk, actually really listen to what she's saying as well. And not only listen, but remember the things that she is saying. Try to retain the information. Don't be thinking about, you know, having, you know, intercourse with her later. Don't be thinking about, um, you know, the, the next game on TV, or don't be thinking about what you're gonna be doing at work tomorrow. 
focus and be very present with her and really listen to what she is saying. Because if you really like this girl, then you should be absolutely enamored with her and find her really interesting. So why wouldn't you wanna to listen to her responses to your questions and really focus on them? Because obviously you wanna find out who she is. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to listen to her responses and focus on her and be present with her. And basically being present is basically where you are just really paying attention to this person. You're not elsewhere, you're not at work, you're not thinking about you know those other things that I've listed. You are truly there as a person and really you know putting it in your mind what she's saying. So one of the ways that you can do this as well, being present, is imagine how you would feel if you were her when she talks about her life. She wants above all to be understood fully. So, you know, when she's telling you about the experiences of her life, you know, put yourself in her situation, kind of imagine uh, yourself as if, you know, is it kind of like when your parents would tell you stories as a kid and they, those stories that didn't have like pictures, you know, they'll be telling you a story about something and you would kind of imagine what was going on in your head uh, while they were, you know, telling you that story. And that's kind of like what you want to do where to really understand the girl, right? That's what you really need to do is to actually really feel the experience and put yourself in that experience if you can. Um, and then you'll be able to understand her and she wants to be understood. So the next point is when she asks about you, give a meaningful response, then switch the conversation back to her. So I'm gonna go into um, what a meaningful response looks like. So this is what a meaningful response looks like. So uh, a non-meaningful response is this. So she asks you, what is your favorite TV show? And you say, Game of Thrones, what about you? That is a non-meaningful response. This is a more meaningful response, and this is the kind of response that you do want to give. So she asks you, what is your favorite TV show? And you say, Game of Thrones. I really like the concept of a family being separated in a dangerous world as they try to find each other again. I also like the fact that no character is safe. It makes it oddly realistic even though it's a fantasy show. What about you? So as you can see, even though it's kind of like a meaningful response, it's still quite brief. Like you're not elaborating, you're not talking for hours and hours and hours about Game of Thrones. You're basically saying, I like Game of Thrones, these are the reasons why, and then you ask her about what her favorite TV show is. Um, because sometimes I find, because sometimes what I see with some guys um, is they go on and on and on and on and on about things that they like too much that they keep on talking about it for hours and hours and hours and the girl gets bored and therefore you're not being mysterious enough because if you keep on talking and chatting away about your life and the things that you like and you're not asking her about herself and what she likes then you're not being mysterious and it also shows that you're not very considerate about what she likes you by so by saying that you like something give some good deep reasons as to why you really like it so something might be another example might be like um she might ask you what kind of video games that you like and you say oh i really like um the pokemon games like i really like the original red yellow and blue because they bring so much nostalgia and i can play those games over and over and over again because it brings me good memories from my past of when my childhood and then you're like what games do you like you know you have those kind of meaningful responses but still keep them relatively brief so the last points that i want to get into is on how to deal with a shy girl so this is something i wrote here which is a shy girl is no longer a shy when she feels comfortable with who she is with and I know this because when I was younger, um, I was really shy. I was really shy when I was a child and up until about the age of 11, I was really, really shy and reserved. But I was only ever shy in situations where I didn't feel comfortable. Once I felt comfortable and I was able to loosen up and be myself, I was no longer shy. First point that I'll make here is, shy girls just need extra time to get used to you than extroverted girls. So if you are dealing with a shy girl, then it's gonna take them more time to warm up to you and to feel comfortable around you. So so the dating process might be a bit quicker with extroverted girls because of course they're extroverted and they feel comfortable within themselves and they feel comfortable to be themselves like automatically pretty much. So when you go on a date with an extroverted girl, you probably only need to go on like a few dates before she starts feeling really comfortable with you and starts falling in love with you. Whereas if you're dating a shy girl, it may take a couple more dates or even like let's say like half, 
like double the time it takes with an extroverted girl, just because it takes them longer to feel comfortable to be themselves. So the, the second point is show her that it's okay to be herself by being yourself. So the best way to get a girl to, a shy girl to open up and to be herself is by you being yourself as well. So that means, you know, being yourself automatically when you start meeting her, being your fun, goofy self that I'm sure that you are, <laughs> right? So the last point is uh, use laughter and humor to get her to feel relaxed. Don't be so serious. So if you are like uh, using laughter and you're being very humorous, um, you're being very playful, you know, you're being silly, you're doing, you know, just being your silly self, kind of like how you act when you're around your best friend. Um, that's how you got, that's how you get someone to start feeling more comfortable around you. Just treat them in that kind of way, having that same kind of humor and that fun, loving kind of um, attitude. Because sometimes with dates, um, especially if it's really, really romantic dates, uh, sometimes the formality of it can be very um, anxiety provoking. Um, so don't be formal, don't be really serious like, oh, okay, I need to get to know this girl. So you start asking her questions as like she's like a, someone to interrogate. You know, just be relaxed. Because basically, you are, as if you are a guy watching this, you are in charge of the atmosphere, right? So because obviously guys tend to be more leadership roles, they take on the leadership role in the you know romantic heterosexual relationship. They are the leader. They create the environment, um, and they and they create the atmosphere of their environment. So basically, what this means is, if you want her to feel relaxed, then you must be relaxed. If you want her to have a good time and to have fun, then you must be having a good time and having fun. If you want her to start being herself and less shy, then you also need to start being yourself and being less shy. Um, so that's how you kind of lead. If, however you want an interaction to go, you must be the first one to do it. Because girls are very, because most girls, especially shy girls, they don't like being the leader. They, they want someone else to lead. They want someone else to create that fun, loving environment. They don't want to be the one to do it. So you do it first and then she will join in. Um, but obviously this might take some time so she start, um, because she needs time to open up to you and to feel comfortable around you. And like I said, um, it's probably going to take a lot longer with shy girls than it does extrovert girls. They just need a little bit more time. So anyway, that was my video on how to get her to express her feelings and to put in more of an effort. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Thank you so much to the viewer who left that question. It's a really interesting topic. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you would like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com. On the shop page of that website, you'll be able to find a free PDF download, which is a dating and relationships manual. It's kind of in the beta stages. So if you do read it and you have any critiques or anything in there that you'd like me to add because you feel like I missed something out, then please let me know so I can make it the best product possible for those people that want it. Thank you so much for watching guys and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.